Welcome to the front row from the Solid Rock Baptist Church, 2715 Brame Road, Greensboro, North Carolina, with Pastor Charles Arnold. We invite you to join us for Sunday School at 10 and the worship service at 11. Please like and subscribe to be notified when each service is posted. We hope you are blessed by this edition of The Front Row and to God be the glory. I am going to be in uh, two places actually this morning. Uh, <clears throat> Matthew chapter number 9 and then I'm going to go back for the main text to the book of Numbers chapter 15. Matthew 9 and you'll know what I'm going to read. It's uh, the, about the woman with the issue of blood. Uh, but I want to kind of delve into uh, the meaning behind that. You know, we, we know that she came and, and touched, the, touched his garment. She said, if I can touch his garment, I'll be made whole. Uh, and, uh, but there's meaning uh, behind that. Now, I kind of want to address that this morning. Matthew chapter 9, page uh, 1007 if you have an old Schofield. And then we'll fall back to the book of uh, Numbers and, uh, you know, maybe do a little expository. Uh, this morning, Numbers, chapter number 15, and, uh, and uh, we will uh, give you a few thoughts there. Uh, that'll be page one, 187, if you have an old Schofield Bible. So 1,007, and we'll fall back to 187. Amen. And I know uh, I got a lot more information here than I'm going to be able to get out this morning, but uh, we'll give you the highlights. Amen. Uh, and this has kind of been cooking and turning in my mind for a little bit, and uh, that is uh, the subject uh, uh, that I'd like to address this morning is touching the hem of his garment, amen, touching the hem of his garment. I mean, uh, think about it now. Uh, you know, this woman came and, and she needed a touch and uh, God blessed her in, in, a, in a mighty way. She came by faith. That, that's the only way that you can really touch the Lord is by faith. Uh, so let, let's, uh, let's read a few verses. Uh, Matthew chapter number nine. And uh, look down about verse number 20. Uh, it says, And behold, a woman which was diseased with an issue of blood 12 years came behind him, touched the hem of his garment. For she said within herself, If I may but touch his garment, I shall be whole. But Jesus turned him about, and when he saw her, he said, Daughter, be of good comfort. Thy faith hath made thee whole. And the woman was made whole from that hour. Amen. Uh, and before we uh, go to Numbers, uh, let's pray. Father, we do thank you, Lord, for the blessings you've given us. Thank you for uh, this number that's come. I, I know today there are some that couldn't be with us, and there are some sick and some hindered. I pray, God, that you put your hand on them. Lord, I, I do thank you for this place you've given us that we can come and gather and worship. I'm sure it's been great to to be here today among your people. I pray that you would uh, meet with us the great Holy Spirit of God would uh, descend and Father that you would bring the things to bear that we need to see and know today. Uh, lead God and direct us we pray these things in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ and for his sake. Amen. Amen. Uh, familiar story. The woman with the issue of blood. If I may but touch his garment and the Bible said she touched the hem of his garment. Now, go back to Numbers, if you will. <clears throat> Numbers, chapter number 15. And uh, we'll, uh, we'll grab some verses here, uh, starting at verse 37. Uh, this is the origin story. Uh, this will give you some meaning. Maybe you've never thought about it. You know, uh, I used to think, well, uh, you know, she came, and I know that men in those days wore uh, what we would call a robe, a long robe. Uh, and I thought, well, you know, she got down and, you know, just grabbed the bottom of his garment. But there's more to it than that. Uh, and, and notice this, verse 37, The Lord spake unto Moses, saying, 
uh, speak to the children of Israel and bid them that they make them fringes in the borders of their garments throughout their generations, that they put upon the fringe of the borders a ribbon of blue. And it shall be unto you for a fringe that you may look upon it and remember all the commandments of the Lord and do them, and that you seek not after your own heart and your own eyes, after which you used to go a whoring, that you may remember and do all my commandments and be holy unto your God. I am the Lord your God which brought you out of the land of Egypt to be your God. I am the Lord, your God. Amen. Now, like I said, we're all familiar with that story in uh, Matthew chapter 9. Uh, and we're, uh, we're told uh, that she was healed by touching the hem uh, of his garment. Now, as I said, men in those days wore a flowing robe, uh, and we think of the hem as being the very bottom portion of the rope, uh, the part nearest the ground. And we get to that picture <clears throat> in our mind, uh, you know, of this woman with an issue of blood st uh, stooping down and touching uh, the hem of his garment. The word hem uh, uh, in the New Testament uh, means uh, what we see here in Numbers where he called it fringe, a fringe or a tassel or border. Of the garment. Now, you'll notice back in Numbers 15 that we're told to make fringes in the borders of their garment. The word fringe, uh, same word as him in Matthew, and, and, uh, and the word is uh, uh, zitzit. Uh, it's spelled T Z I T Z I T, zitzit. Um, and it speaks of a tassel. Now, and I want to explain. Uh, you know, those days the man wore a long flowing robe. Over, over the years it changed. And, uh, and it became more of, a, instead of rounded, it became more rectangular uh, and it draped down over the, uh, uh, the body. And it had four corners. You know, possibly, uh, you know, you might think of a long piece of cloth uh, with uh, a place for the head to go through, and it goes over your front and over your back, you know. And, and uh, then it's got uh, tassels or fringes uh, at the bottom. Uh, and and uh, styles changed and clothing changed, and they became shorter one thing and another. Uh, and, and, uh, and then that garment uh, became less rounded, and it became uh, more square and shorter. Uh, and, and today we see it, if you've ever seen a Jewish Prayer, uh, prayer shawl. Ever seen one of those? You know, that when Jews, when they go to temple or are praying, uh, uh, they will put it uh, around them. Sometimes, uh, most often, the ones I've seen have uh, uh, stripes on them. <clears throat> and uh, I don't think the stripes are commanded, but they put them on there. Uh, and, and anyway, this is called, uh, this is where the, uh, the gold garment migrated to this new prayer shawl, and it's called in their language, it's called a talit. Talit. Uh, the, the prayer shawl has four corners, and on the, each corner there are tassels, tassels, or zitzit, fringes. Uh, and they hang down, and they've been used for uh, thousands of years. And a person who uses a prayer shawl, uh, uh, this would be a Jew, uh, using the prayer shawl, uh, the way they use it is there's an inscription on the prayer shawl, and they would kiss the, the first word on the inscription, and they would kiss the last word on the inscription, and then they would uh, uh, wrap the, uh, uh, the, the cloth around them uh, and place it you know, over their head because... They were, uh, this was the talit, they were to shut themselves off from the outside so they could uh, concentrate and worship God. Uh, and, and then later they would let it down. Now some people think that maybe that's what Jesus had in mind when he told uh, his followers to enter into their closet and pray. It was the talit, the prayer shawl, cover your head, you know, uh, so that when... Uh, you're seeking or praying, uh, praying to God that you shut out the outside. You ever notice when you try to pray, the devil always throws something at you? You know, there'll be a noise in the kitchen that you don't know what it was. 
or you know maybe uh, you know if it's in uh, uh, our case, you know. Uh, 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 sometimes, uh, you know, I've seen Cindy praying and the, and the cat uh, is impatient. He wants her to go to bed uh, and he will bat her on the head like, hurry up, come on. And, and she will be like, I'm praying. You know, uh, he's, he's a heathen anyway. So uh, the, the cat, I'm trying to teach him, but he hasn't learned anything. But, but anyway, the, the devil's always throwing, uh, you know, uh, things will come in your mind, uh, you know, and, and I have to often, when I pray, I ask, Lord, uh, help me in my mind to, to block out the outside uh, and, and let me uh, pray and seek your face, drive away the opposing powers, uh, I, I have to do that. I don't, I don't know about you. Uh, because the devil will try to disturb you. Uh, he'll try to put static on the line between you and, and heaven. Now, when uh, uh, in 1 Samuel, when David, you remember the story, when David cut off uh, Saul's garment, he cut off the, the tzitzit, the fringes that were hanging down. Uh, and you've probably seen them. If you've seen a prayer show, all those fringes hanging down, tassels, you know, and some are uh, lengths. Uh, and then there's a long one in the middle. Uh, and it's, uh, it used to be blue. Uh, and, and then the mollusks that produced that blue died out, became extinct, and some of them started using black so they could remember the destruction of Jerusalem and all that, the destruction of the temple. Uh, but those tassels hang down. Uh, and David cut off Saul's uh, 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 garment. He cut off the, the fringes. This was a sign of Saul's uh, right to rule, his right to reign. In other words, God was cutting him off from his ability to rule. Now, you remember Saul, God sent him out. Samuel told him to go out to the Amalekites, uh, destroy them, destroy their cattle, destroy everything. And so, uh, Saul came back uh, and he said, I've done what you asked, Samuel. And Samuel said, if you've done what I asked, then what meaneth then this bleeding of sheep? He hadn't done what God said. He, he said, well, I thought it'd be good if I brought a few sheep for an offering and I brought their king so that, you know, we could uh, make fun of him or, or whatever. Samuel said, that's not what I told you to do. I told you to destroy everything, you know. And Samuel, or, or, or Saul, turned to go, uh, uh, or Samuel did, and, and uh, 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 Saul reached out and grabbed him by the garment. And when he grabbed him by the garment, he ripped his garment. And what that was was a sign that God was going to rip the kingdom from his hand. God used that. This was probably, uh, this was his uh, talit. Now, another example. You remember when Elijah was taken up into heaven and his follower, his uh, person he was mentoring, Elisha, said, uh, I'd ask you a favor. And Elijah said, what's that? He said, when you're taken up, uh, uh, give me a double portion. He said, boy, you've asked a hard thing. Nevertheless, uh, if you see me go up, then it'll be that, and if not, it won't be. And the Bible said Elijah took, uh, when he went up, his mantle fell on Elijah, or Elisha. That was probably his talit. You know, it passed down to him. Now, uh, uh, the, it, 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 the shawl it was not just a cloth, uh, but uh, in the tassels themselves. It, 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 and I want to tell you just a, a couple of things about that. Uh, they, uh, the uh, talit, the, the shawl itself, and then the, the zitzits or the fringes, the hem, the fringe uh, 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 that are there, the tassels, they're formed from four strands of thread, uh, uh, which uh, are double to make eight strands. And one of the strings, usually that blue string, hangs down a little longer than the rest. These strands uh, are tied, listen to this, these strands are tied in five, uh, in a series of five knots with a certain number of windings longer than uh, uh, the, the longer string in each knot. Five knots represent the Torah, or what you and I know in our English Bible as the first five books of the Bible, Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, and Deuteronomy. That's the Jewish Torah. So to them, those five series of five knots represent the Torah. God's telling them something. He's telling us something. I don't want to get to that. But between these four knots, there are four, there are four windings. Uh, the first is wound seven times. The second is wound eight times. The third is wound uh, 11 times. And the fourth is wound 13 times. Now, 
uh, each letter uh, in the Hebrew alphabet has a value, you know, uh, a numerical value. Uh, and the first uh, three windings, 7, 8, and 11, represent 26. And this is the number equal to the Hebrew value for the name of God or Yahweh, or it's spelled without vowels, it's spelled Y-H-W-H, Yahweh, no vowels. That's the, the, uh, the, the numerical value of the name of God is 26. Uh, and uh, it's the word we know as Yahweh or Jehovah. We may call it Jehovah. Uh, uh, and then there's the number 13, which is the last one, the 13 times. Uh, uh, this was the number of attributes that God possessed, the Jews believe. Interestingly here, we, we always associate the number of 13 with something bad. But to them, 13 refers to God's attributes. Amen. Uh, and, and then you can go on. Uh, 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 let me give you another thought here. Uh, uh, one interpretation is that the five knots with the eight strands equal 13. Uh, the number value for the, uh, for the tzitzit or the tassel in uh, Hebrew is 600. And these numbers add up to 613. You say, well, what's the significance of that? Well, the, the number of uh, laws that are found in the Torah, the first five books of the Bible, uh, there are 365, thou shalt not. 365, interestingly, 365 days in the year, 365 thou shalt not. And there are 248 thou shalt. That adds up to 613. Interesting, isn't it? And the text says, you may look upon it and remember all the commandments of the Lord. Amen. Uh, and so what does all this mean? Well, uh, uh, this uh, is very interesting uh, uh, to me. Amen. Uh, the name of God uh, is there. Uh, and by the way, if you add up 7 and 8 and 11 and 13, you get 39. Interestingly, you know how many books are in the Old Testament? 39. 39. I'm not trying to apply meaning where there is none, but I think God's trying to tell us something. Now, let, let, let me get to the message. These things, the prayer shawl, the talit, and its tassels, the zizi, uh, was telling them something, and I think it's telling us something. First, uh, let's look at verse 40. That ye may remember and do all my commandments and be holy unto your God. The Jews were to wear tassels on their garments as a constant reminder uh, of their relationship with the Lord. Their uh, relationship uh, uh, made them special. They were unlike any other nation in the, in the whole world. God chose them. Somebody said, why did God choose the Jews? I, I don't know. You'd have to ask the Lord, but he did. He chose them. And, and look at all they have been through. Possibly the only reason I can think of is because he saw the suffering of the Jews through history and how they've been ostracized and how they've been murdered. And I mean, just so many awful, terrible things have happened to them. And God said, you know what? I, I'm going to choose them. I'm going to bless them. Maybe that's why God did it. Now, I don't know that for sure, but maybe he did. Listen, the Bible said they're a kingdom, a priest, a holy nation. Now, we, we need this reminder too as Christians today. Now, we don't go to temple. We don't wear the tallit. Uh, you know, we're, we're uh, uh, modern-day Christians. We follow Christ, who is God in the flesh, by the way. But we need this reminder. You say, what are you saying? I I'm saying that it's telling us that salvation is not about what you do. It's about who you know. Amen. I told somebody the other day, salvation is not about being a Baptist. It's not about being a... Presbyterian or Episcopalian or Catholic or anything else you want to put on. Salvation is about a personal relationship with Jesus Christ. And that's what we're being told. Amen? The, the, the Bible says uh, uh, that Jesus came uh, and he came to save us. That God so loved the world. Now don't think of that in, uh, uh, in ginormous terms that uh, you know God just loved the world and didn't care for me as an individual. Uh, no, God sees you and God saw you as an individual. Amen. Amen. He told Abraham, 
before, uh, or he told uh, uh, the, the Pharisees uh, uh, when they quoted uh, uh, Abraham, he said, before Abraham was, I am. God sees you and me as individuals. So we need this reminder that God cares about us as individuals. Sometimes we need to come and touch him. You see this woman, can you picture her on her knees? She had to get down on her knees to touch the border of his garment. The only way you'll ever get to Christ is to humble yourself. We can't come to Christ with the attitude of the I know it all. And, you know, I don't need God's help. I can stand on my own. Yeah, have you ever met anybody like that? I have. You know, I don't need God. Or if I come to God, I'm going to come my way. No, let me tell you, if you come to God, you're going to come his way, his prescribed way. Jesus said, I am the door, not I work like a door, I function like a door, I am the door. If any man come to the Father, he must come by me. Uh, he said, uh, and he had in mind the sheep. He said, I'm the good shepherd. The good shepherd, uh, you know, takes care of his sheep. Uh, and in those days, uh, when evening came and the shepherd's out in the field, he might go to the foot of the mountain uh, and there he would be surrounded on three sides uh, and the opening would be in front and he would gather briars and brambles and thorn bushes and all that and he would put an outer uh, wall up and he'd put the sheep in there, a makeshift corral. And you know what he would do? He would sit down in the opening. He became the door. If the bear comes to get my sheep, he's coming through me. If the lion comes to get my sheep, he's coming through me. Amen? Listen, we got to respect that. You're one of God's sheep. And if the devil comes after you, he's got to come through Jesus Christ. Amen? You say, but the, the devil is attacking me. Uh, well, listen, look at it this way. Don't look at it just as the devil is attacking me or the devil's dragging me down, or the devil's throwing darts at me. Look at it this way. In order to get to you, the devil had to bypass Jesus and, and get his permission like he did with Job. So count that as a vote of confidence that God has confidence in you that you will do the right thing. Amen? Think of it in that light. Jesus is saying, you know, I think he'll do the right thing. So you, you go throw darts at him. I'm going to be watching, and I'll step in if I have to, but I got confidence. That's what he said about Job. Lucifer, Satan, you go tempt him, you do whatever you got to do, but you can't take his life. That's the, that's the line in the sand. But God was still functioning as a door. Can you see that woman now coming? I've been sick for 12 years. I've been losing blood every day. Now, if any of you don't know it, I mean, when you're losing blood, uh, uh, you know, uh, it drags your body down. Your hemoglobin is messed up. I mean, uh, it makes you tired. Uh, you can't function well. You can't think straight. Uh, it'll make you uh, really uh, 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 in bad shape. You know, I, I was there at one time, had to get iron treatments, go to the hospital, uh, you know, and the, the first one I went and I had to stay all day. They had this humongous bag of iron and I had to stay there all day and, and uh, wheel that uh, uh, thing around just to have something to do and I watched TV and, and watched magazine or look at magazines in the room that looked like they were 10 years old uh, you know and, and I'm wandering around with that little uh, you know that little stick with wheels on it and that bag and I'm wondering I'm hurrying that's like hurry uh, you know they only drip it in so so fast and finally they changed. And they said, we're going to give you a different one, but uh, we're going to give you one that's broken in two parts. And you, you come one, uh, one week, and you take the first part, and you come in the, the next week and take the second part. And it was a bag about that big, uh, and it took less than an hour for the whole thing. And I was like, hallelujah, this is wonderful. You know, I'd zip in there about uh, 7 o'clock in the morning, and nurses would say, how are you doing? We got your room ready. Go sit right there, take my blood pressure, take my pulse, and all that kind of stuff. And, uh, and then she would come and, you know, they would uh, stick me uh, in the arm and, and it'd take about, uh, I don't know, maybe 20 minutes for that stuff to run in. And, and I said, I can go now. She said, no, sit down. I said, well, why are I going to sit down? It's all in. She said, because we've got to watch you. 
make sure, you know, that you don't fall out. So I had some fun with her one day. The first time they did that, they, uh, she said they had to watch me. And I said, oh, this will be great. And so when she came back in, uh, she was like, well, uh, how you doing? I, I said, you know. <laughs> and and uh, I could see her eyes light up. <laughs> she didn't think it was funny. In fact, she told me, she said, that is not funny. <laughs> I said, I'm sorry, but I thought it was. Uh, and because she was ready to hit the code blue button, you know, she thought I was going to croak right there uh, and thought I was having an anaphylactic uh, shock or something. Uh, but I determined in my mind it was not good to do that again. So, <laughs> But anyway, we, we became uh, kind of friends after that, but uh, she was not amused, uh, you know. Uh, but listen, uh, it reminded them, secondly, of their requirements before the Lord. Look at verse 39. And it shall be unto you for a fringe that you may look upon it and remember all the commandments of the Lord and do them and that you seek not after your own heart, and your own eyes, after which you used to go a whoring. The tassels on the four corners reminded them they were required to obey the law of the Lord, no matter what. Now, get this picture. Remember now, four corners, right? This garment comes down, this prayer shawl comes down, and it's got the tassels on the four corners. Meaning what? I, I, I like symbology. I don't know about y'all, but I like it. But the four corners, north, south, east, and west, means any which way he turned, God was there telling him, don't forget, you need to stay in my will. If he turned this way, it's there. If he turned that way, it's there. The four corners were covered. God said, I'm everywhere. Wherever you go, you need to obey me. Now, we need that too. You say, well, in what sense? Because the Bible said we are to obey God and do his will and not our own will. We are to keep his commandments. In fact, the Bible said, uh, hereby know we that we know him. This is uh, the book of John. Hereby know we that we know him if we keep his commandments. You say, okay, what are you saying? Well, it's about to get real. There are people. There are people who claim to know the Lord, but they don't keep his commandments. They're like the ones Jesus told about in the parable of the sower. And he sowed the seed, and then the birds came out and picked the seed. And some, the seed grounded, and, the, and it started to come up. And then it was looking good, and then it faded away. Now, I'll show you an example. Uh, my yard needed some grass. I mean, uh, I, I used to have a good stand of grass in the side yard. And then one morning I woke up and there was a, uh, a bobcat in the yard. And somebody had decided to do work. They thought it'd be a good idea. The, they didn't like the level of the land. And I saw this guy in the, in the yard, and he was taking the bobcat and pushing huge mounds of dirt toward the, uh, my house. And I could look out the kitchen window, and you know, if I'd been able to walk through the window, I could have stepped out on the pile of dirt. And I'm like, what are you doing? It was the, the blessed HOA. Anyway, they never got it straightened out. <clears throat> never got it leveled out right. They would send these people out there with these little scopes and, you know, all that kind of stuff. And they never got leveled out. Hence, I had water problems until, uh, you know, uh, water standing in the order until recently. And I thought, you know, they got that squared away. I need some grass. And so I, I got some grass and, you know, sowed the grass and got some straw and covered it up and, and watered it, uh, you know, probably not as much. Well, definitely not as much as I should, but I did water it. And, and guess what happened? Nothing. I don't think I got two blades of grass out of all that. You know, I was like, man, look at this. In fact, uh, all that straw and stuff was out there. The leaves were falling. It was all matted up. And the other day I said, it's going to rain. 
and, and it's going to mat those leaves and straw together, and it's going to make a big old honking mess. Uh, and so I, I got the leaf blower and the rake, and uh, and I got all that stuff up. And, and when the wife came home, she said, oh, you've been working in the yard. It was bare again. I mean, I could uh, just about get out there like the old timers used to with a broom, you know, when they used to sweep the yard, uh, you know. Uh, but listen, that that's the way Jesus said some folks are. They make a good show. They start out good. And, and I could tell you some folks, some of which you would know, uh, uh, that started out good. And, and they made a good show, a good profession. And you thought, boy, they're, they're on fire. They're going to go uh, uh, full guns. They're going to really bring it. And then all of a sudden, they're gone, you know. They're like a guy on the street in New York playing a cell game, you know. Uh, where's the P? Well, I think it's there. It's never there. But because you'll never win that game. It's like playing five-card money with a dealer on the street. You'll never win that game uh, because it's rigged, like the P is rigged. Uh, how do they do it? Well, he's got, uh, he's got it on a mat, and, and when you don't see it, he rolls that, uh, that shell up there, and he lifts the back of it, and he grabs that little ball with his thumb, and he rolls it out under his hand, and then when you don't see him again, he lifts it up and puts it under the other one. Uh, and you think it's under this one. It's never under that one because he moved it. It's a trick, you know. Uh, and, and so don't fall for that. Listen, that's the devil's game. Responsibilities. They need uh, to remember their responsibility. They were reminded of their obligation to separate themselves from evil and walk in the way of the Lord. Amen. That they, they were supposed to do everything. Now, uh, here's, here's the kicker. They might have kept the letter of the law, and they hated every minute of it. R remember when Jesus said you tithe and even mint and anise? These are little tiny spices. But he said you omit the weightier matters of the law, you know. You, you, you don't take care of the widows. You don't take care of the orphans. Oh, you give your tithes and offerings, and you give even down to the spices. If I got a quart of, uh, of mint uh, this week, uh, I, I gave my, my mint. You know, I gave my mint tithes and all of that. But but you're letting people go hungry, and you're not doing God's will. Uh, and they uh, they kept the law, but they hated every minute of it. Amen. Jesus addressed that in the Sermon on the Mount when he said, thou shalt not commit adultery, you know, thou shalt not uh, bear false witness, you'll not swear an oath, uh, 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 you'll not uh, take vengeance, uh, you are to forgive your neighbor 70 times 7, and so on, and so on, and so on. Uh, he was reminding them, look, you look clean, you wash your hands, you wash your body. Uh, you know, the, the Pharisees criticized the disciples for going through the, the field and eating corn uh, without washing and all that. And, and Jesus said, you're missing the point. You know, you're missing the point. Uh, there are folks in church that are associated with church that are like that. It's all about, the, you know, the, the law or you must do this and you must do that and you must not do this and you must not do that. Back to what? Personal relationship. So you're saying, preacher, what are you saying? Are you saying we can get saved and do what we want to? No. Nope. I am saying that you could do what you want to, but you won't. Amen? That means, you know, you, you can drive by the ABC store and you won't need to go in there because they don't have anything in there you need anymore. Why? Because you're saved. You can go by the casino and you don't need to go in there because they, uh, they uh, got nothing for you. Some people, you know, like that kind of thing. I I've known some people and they call themselves Christians, uh, but they like to gamble. You know, they, they go to Vegas and they go to Cherokee and all that kind of stuff. Listen, if you got money you won't get rid of, come and see me. I'll take it. I'll put it to good use. I got some widows I know that need help. I got some sick folk I know that need help. Uh, don't run it down the slot machine. The one armed bandit was, you know, maybe they don't they don't have the one armed bandit anymore. Now it's buttons, I guess. 
uh, I think somebody c corrected me on that out here a while back. Uh, uh, but listen, uh, uh, listen, it, it, it's a rigged game. I, I mean, listen, uh, if, if you got stuff you want to throw away, just, you know, let me have it. Let me have it. I'll put it to good use. The responsibility. We have a responsibility to eschew evil and do the right thing. Now let me quit with this. Verse 41. I am the Lord your God, which brought you out of the land of Egypt. I am the Lord your God, which brought you out of the land of Egypt to be your God. I am the Lord your God. The tassels on their garments reminded them that they were special. They had been purchased by the Lord, by the blood of thousands of offerings over the years. We have been redeemed. We have been purchased by the blood of Jesus Christ who was our Savior, is our Savior, died for our sins, rose from the dead. We need to be reminded so that we too don't forget what Jesus went through to purchase our redemption. Read Isaiah chapter 53 sometime. Read about how Isaiah prophesied hundreds of years before it happened how Jesus would be uh, persecuted and how he would be buried uh, uh, among those that were wicked, that he would be crucified, that he would be a man of sorrows, uh, that he would be acquainted with grief, uh, uh, that we hid our faces from him, that he would be so uh, 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 beaten down that uh, he would be marred, that he wouldn't even look like a man anymore. I mean, just get a picture of that in your mind, that Jesus was uh, uh, purchasing our redemption Somebody said he spilled his blood. No, he didn't. He shed his blood. Difference. He gave it freely. And then don't forget that not only did he die, but as I told somebody, you know, uh, a week or so ago, I said, you know, be careful of some religion, so-called, because there are some out there that don't believe Jesus ever died on the cross. They believe that he, uh, they call it he swooned on the cross or he passed out from the pain and the loss of blood. And he passed out and so they took him down and they took him and put him in the tomb and it was nice and cool and dark in there uh, and uh, he revived. And that's how they explain the resurrection. Let me tell you what, if you don't believe Jesus rose from the dead, you're not saved. I'll just put it blunt, just like that. Amen. Uh, we, we must believe and we must remember Jesus died for our sin. He suffered great pain. He suffered being uh, ostracized. He suffered all the pain uh, uh, that sin could bring to bear. You say, what do you mean by that? Well, listen, your sin and my sin and the sin of everybody in this room and everybody in Guilford County and everybody in North Carolina and everybody in the United States and everybody in the world over the thousands of years, every sin was on Jesus that day. Now, let me tell you, I can't hardly stand the weight of my own. Sometimes I look back at things that I have done, things that I know God's forgiven me for, but it's still in my mind, and I, I wonder, why did I do that? And I think that was the dumbest thing I ever did. Why would I do that? But I did it. And it still bothers me. You ever have things that bother you that come up in your mind and say, why did I do that? Now think of all of that. Think about the murders that have been committed. Think about the abuse that have been committed. All the sneaky, shadowy crimes that people have done in the shadows of darkness, uh, all of that fell on Christ. He took that weight. And after he took that weight, he went, to the, he went to the tomb and on the third day he rose from the dead. We need to remember that. They were reminded of their redemption. We have been redeemed. You use this thing uh, uh, some people do on Easter. I'm redeemed by love divine. Glory, glory, Christ is mine. All to him I now resign. I have been what? Redeemed. Amen. Thank God. Touching the hem of his garment. You say, what are you saying? Well, the point I'm trying to make is, if we've been saved, we've touched his garment, but we don't need to be so distant and so far away uh, from God that we don't come back once in a while and, and just touch the hem of his garment for uh, remembrance and thankfulness and say, thank you, Lord. 
for what you've done for me. Thank you for dying for me. Thank you for giving me a home eternal. Thank you for all the blessings you have bestowed upon me. Uh, brother, that ribbon of blue that was there, what did it mean? It reminded him of his heavenly home and his responsibility to God. God likes blue, I think, because he made the sky blue, and I think he likes green because he made a lot of green grass and green trees and so on. Amen. Let's stand at our feet. Hope you got something out of the message today. And if you need to, sometime just slip away and, uh, you know, cover your head uh, with your spiritual talit and get in that closet and shut out the world and talk to God and touch the hem of his garment. You say, preacher, you don't know my troubles. Well, I know somebody that does. Listen, I've talked to people this week, some of whom are in uh, a lot of difficulty. I have. If I had a magic wand, I would help them, but I cannot. But I did promise them I'll pray for you because God will never put more on you than you can bear. And I will pray for you that God will send you some relief. I won't tell you any details about who or what, but I, multiple people I have talked to this week. Listen, folks, if you're in trouble, if you're in difficulty, touch the hem of his garment. If you committed sin and you've wandered away from God and you want to come back, well, come on and touch the hem of his garment. If you're lost and you don't know God, then just come on and touch the hem of his garment by faith. Thank you for watching. Our prayer is that you have been enriched and brought closer to the Lord by this ministry. And so we leave you with this blessing from the Word of God. The Lord bless thee and keep thee. The Lord make his face shine upon thee and be gracious unto thee. The Lord lift up his countenance upon thee and give thee peace. We have saved you a seat right here on the front row. Until we meet again, to God be the glory.